Before I start painting, one of the things I like to do is use this nifty product called Gloves in a Bottle, and what it does is it protects your hands from all these solvents and cad cadmium colors, flake white. Uh, a lot of artists use gloves, but this is a really uh, convenient alternative. So let's get going. So what I'm doing here is I'm blending in the colors that I had when I was doing some color mixing to show you uh, what different colors look like when they mix together. And I've blended in and made a toned background so that when we go to paint an object that's the color white, you have a tone to put it on top of because you can't really paint white against white. It doesn't really work. So I have here just little vase-like object, which you can see has been around. And uh, I don't know if any of you all went to art school, but they used to torture us by making us paint eggs. Eggs are white, and we used to have to paint eggs for weeks at a time. So I'm gonna try to speed it up a little bit, and we'll paint this vase. We'll try to do it in five minutes or less. And so what I'm gonna do is I'll, you can't see what I'm seeing, but I'm gonna put it here. And this white object, of course, isn't really white at all. It has shadows, it has uh, reflections that are bouncing off from colors that are around this room. So the first thing I'm going to do is sketch it out very quickly. And I'm not even going to use white to sketch it out. I'm just going to use a neutral color. I think we've been talking about that uh, as we've been going is that I just, when I use a color to draw with, I basically use, try to get it as neutral as possible. Uh, almost mud and very watered down so that or thinned out so that we can paint over it and it won't uh, bleed into the white especially the fact that we will be painting white so let me just rough this object in that's an expression we use when we're drawing we call we we say roughing it Okay, there we go. Now, the last color I'm going to put on here is white. Again, I always like to keep the highlights for last. So the first thing I'm seeing is the darkest part, which is the left-hand side of our little vase. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of ultramarine blue and a little bit of the cadmium red light and make kind of a mud color. Maybe put a little cerulean in there, a little white. And what am I going to do? I'm going to put it right up next to the vase and with just a little bit of medium scrub that color in okay now this is very general but objects that are that have vertical subjects that have a vertical piece to it are generally darker than any part of the object that's facing up. And that's just the way it is. The light comes down and it catches the light. So it's usually going to be more often than that not darker here on the bottom part. Now of course if the lighting's different and you've got light bouncing up or if this is sitting on a white object that would probably change. But in this case I'm putting the dark on the bottom and as you can see I'm just being very loose, not really worried if I'm painting it ac you know, accurately at this point. The rim here has a little bit of a, a, a medium dark color, not as dark as the other. So I'm going to put mix up some white with a little bit of that mixture that I used on the left hand side of the vase and I'm going to put that up in here. The opening to the vase and then I'm going to put some of that mixture of cerulean blue, white and a little bit of ultramarine where I see a, a lighter highlights. Okay. 
Now, as you continue to look at the object that you're painting, um, you start to see more colors, maybe that you didn't see before. All of a sudden, I'm noticing, and this is what's so fun about painting objects, the more you look at them, the more you start to see the nuances of colors that are in the object. For example, the brown from the table is, seems to be bouncing up a little bit under here, under the lip of this vase. So I'm going to take advantage of that because I like that look. So I'm just going to put a little bit of red in there. So here we have this white object that has blue in it, has red in it. And I'm putting the red, the, in fact, what kind of red? I'm using alizarin crimson. I'm just painting it right over the blue and letting it mix with the blue that's under it. Now, I, I will tell you, it, the drawing is a little bit misshapen, but that's the beauty of negative space at the end. I can go back in and actually redraw this vase to look a little more realistic, to look a little bit more like what the vase really looks like by painting in the background, but we'll do that towards the end. And now I'm going to mix up a little bit of a lighter blue. I'm squinting. When you squint, you can see lights and darks much more easily than if you have your eyes open. And this is a really good, this is a really good trick. Um, when you squint at anything, it accentuates the lights and darks, especially if you're out in the field looking at a still life. I can really see much more clearly when I'm squinting what's light and what's dark in relationship to each other. When you want to look at color nuances, just the opposite, you open your eyes and then you see the nuances of colors. And that's just one of those little tricks that I think come in real handy. All right, now I'm just going to put the lighter color on top here. And there's some real highlights in there. And those highlights go on at the very last, the very last brush strokes. There's some light hitting in here. A little more light on the left hand side of the, the rim. And then of course this part. So this is, again, we're painting the color white. Now there's a little bit of green in there. I don't know why, but I'm seeing a little bit of green in the, this side. So I'm just going to put just a tinge of it in here. Green, of course, you make, green you make by mixing blue with yellow. So I'm actually going to mix up a little green on the palette because I don't have any green on this palette. So there I have a little mixture that I can dip into when I'm mixing up some of these other colors. And these are all kind of mud tones. There's no true green or true red. They're just little variations of And what it does is when you add, introduce some other colors that are not just blue and white, it just adds a little more interest to the object that you're painting, especially if it's an object as boring as this one that I'm painting, because this really is a boring object. And if you can make a boring object look halfway decent, you're, you're starting to get there, or at least you hope you are. I'm going to put a little more shadow color in here. So I'm just doing what I call the back and forth game, the dance on the canvas where you start going back and forth and modifying your lights, your darks, after you've blocked in the shape. All right, it's starting to get there. This is always the tricky part, which is under, really on any object that's sitting on a table. And, you know, there's many ways to do this, but I really like this yellow that's kicking up into there, or the brown from the table that's looking yellow when it 
it reflects off of the white surface or the under surface. So I think it just look a whole lot more interesting if I put that in there. And again, I think I'm going to put that back up in here. I put red there before, but the more I look at it, it looks a little bit warmer. Also, as you probably noticed, I don't do a lot of blending. I basically work with shapes of lights and darks. You don't see me blending all of this together, and you don't see something that um, I see many students do, and that is if you have a round object, a lot of people have the, the tendency when they're starting out painting is to blend the object in the direction that the, the roundness you know to make it go round and ironically that doesn't work at all really the shapes the crazy little shapes that make up an object are going to make it round we hope alrighty now I'm going to put some of the highlights in the hottest spots are Oh, by the way, this is what's fun about painting is a lot of people think a highlight is just putting white. Sometimes that is the, that is the, the highlight color, but sunlight or a highlight, if you really want to make a bright highlight, you need to use not just white, but a touch of yellow, a touch of, or even a touch of cadmium red light to give it a sunny. When you add a little bit of yellow to it, for some reason it just makes it a little bit brighter than if you just use straight white. And why is that? White is a cool color. And if you add a little bit of yellow to it, just a tiny bit, it's just going to be brighter. It's just one of those things. So white is not all it seems to be. It's got all kinds of color in it. It's got browns, it's got blues, it's got white, it has yellows. And it, it always depends on where the object is, what's around it, what it's sitting on, and all of those colors will affect the color of your, your subject, your and it's sitting on a surface here. And it's always going to be just a little bit darker where it's sitting. Okay, so I'm just going to put a few last touches my inclination, of course, all of our inclinations are just to, just to keep painting something over and over and over again until we actually ruin it. And one of the tricks is knowing when to stop. And everybody has that problem, including myself. Anyhow, let's hold this. See how white this looks here? But when I'm looking at it over here, it really has all these wonderful colors to it. And it's, isn't this a whole lot more interesting than this? I think it is. So as you can see, we've done a simple red apple, which has a lot of colors in it. G green, which has a lot of, a uh, pear has a lot of colors in it. And you can really manipulate the pear by putting another color in the background, make it pop off the canvas a little more. So you've got green and this warm color, which are two opposites, green and red. You've got a teal vase, which is a really tricky vase to paint. And there's the original. And this is just a, a depiction of it and trying to mix up these difficult colors with a limited palette. And of course, the white vase. Thank you so much for joining us today. And if there's anything that you would like to know, uh, I please go on my website, nicolestudio.com, and 
email me with any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And I, I'd love to get some feedback because the more that you can tell me, or the more questions you have for me, the better I can teach and hope that everybody out there can learn something about color mixing. Thank you. Thank you.